All right, so we placed the nut. We tried to string it up. Everything's too low. Uh, this nut is not going to work. It's already way down. Uh, so I'm going to knock it off, and I'm going to go back to the zero glide installation, and we'll do that now. So i got to knock off the bridge. Be back in a minute. So we're going to take the nut off. I said the bridge before. I didn't mean the bridge. With my favorite bridge removal tool is just a broad piece that will go across the whole thing. And it should just knock off. There it comes. Simple. So that's out. Okay. Um, so that was a failure. Too bad. Uh, I must have already sanded it down. Um, previously, you know, to fit it on another guitar, and uh, that didn't work. So what we got to do now is set up with a zero glide, uh, and I'm going to have to sand this out just a little bit again, and then mark the zero glide, and um, take it down onto the bench and grind it down like I had talked about before. I was hoping to get away without having to do that, but you got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? So let's take this and just see if we can sand it down, make sure it's all fairly smooth. We'll get rid of the super glue we just put in there. We'll just make it level anyway. Um, too bad. I was hoping it was going to be simple, but things always don't work out the way you intend them to. We gave it a good shot. So that's that, okay? Now the next thing we need to do is get our zero glide back out again. Put the files away, because I don't think I'm going to need them again. I don't know what else I can do with them. So we'll lock those guys up. We're back to our buddy, the zero glide. We'll get this together and we'll mock it up and bring it down to the grinding shop and make it the right size. Um, this, as I recall, is just a little too wide to fit in the gap, so we'll need to sand it, grind it off the back, because this is going to sit in this way, and it doesn't quite fit in that hole that's already there, or does it? No. So i got to take some off the back, off this side. You don't remove it from the front, because that's where the metal piece, the actual nut fits in. The fret, I should say. So this gives you a zero fret to place in here. And once we mark it and sand it down, we can test it. Um, I think I'm going to need a little bit higher one. Let me start with the highest one. We'll work our way back. I think I've got the highest one in my hand here, this black one. So we're going to lay that in there, try to get a feel for where it is. Well, I think I've got to take it down and sand it first and make it narrow enough to fit in there. But that's how it will go together once it's done. Okay, so we've got to take some material off. Um, and we've got a mark where this will fit in. See, this slides into the bracket there, and there, like that, and then that sits in on top of this. But it's too fat. i got to take this edge down. So that's what we're going to do now. Let me get a marker, and I'm going to mark the sides too while we're here. And then when I go downstairs, I'll grind down the sides and the back all at once. Let's get this positioned in the center. That looks pretty good. So we'll take a marker and mark both sides. So I'll have a reference point to grind down to. So when I take it downstairs, see the black marks? I'm going to bring it into the black marks 
there that I'm going to take some off this surface side. I'm going to do that now. There's no time like the present. Want to come for a walk? All right, here's the grinding wheel. Once I start this up, it's going to make a lot of noise. Um, so what I got to do is take and grind both ends down. Both ends down. Where are you? Here you are. I'm going to grind both ends down to the black line. And then I'm going to take some material off this side on the back so that it will fit on. And when I do that, I'll hang on to it with a, with a Kelly, with a surgical instrument in the jaw so it doesn't bounce around too much on me. All right, so here we go. A little noise. One side. You see I'm close to the line there now. All right, and then we'll paper it a little bit. On the top. And on the edge. Right, and then we're going to take material off of this side. Do that very gingerly. Whoop. It gets kind of hot. Now that's done on that side. I don't know if you can see, but I took material off this side. There's the place for the strings. And then I brought the ends down beyond those black marks. So this should fit on there fairly evenly on both sides. Um, let's come back. All right, so that should fit on there. And I don't know if you can see the mark where the, the uh, actual fret goes in there. Um, but we'll be bringing up right, so we're back upstairs. Let's see how our grinding went. Did we make the hole the right size to fit in there now? Am I in the slot? I think I am. I think I'm in the slot. So the next thing we've got to do is we can actually test this um, by putting it together and putting a couple of strings up on either end and see how this height is for this um, fret. So what we're going to do, I've got to put this the correct way. One way is it sits on the edge of the uh, fretboard and the other edge sits in the hole kind of. That's the way that'll go if I can get this to cooperate. So that's there. Now the fret itself is too long so what I'll have to do is take and bring this downstairs um, and grind down the uh, the zero fret. So let's bring the strings back up, and we'll place them in place, and see if we can get an idea of how our fret position height is. Um, so that's there. It's the wrong hole. That's the right one. I'm going to pull the other string up and move it over. Now that'll give us a first test of the height. So let's try this. We'll tighten up the strings 
on either end. Try to get an idea of where the, the fret's going to sit. Stand from each end. Put equal tension. Now oh, you dope, you're going the wrong way. Put equal tension on the um, zero fret and see how our height is for the first fret. Because with the other one that I just put in, it, it sucked. <laughs> it was just too short. This is sounding better already. I think this one's going to work. Uh, the Zero Glide is a hell of a good invention. Um, you just got to go do that grinding stuff to get it to fit right. And there's no getting around that. You got to be a little handy with a grinder or with sandpaper the old fashioned way and spend, you know, a good hour sanding your little fingers to the bone. Um, I'm all in favor of old-fashioned methods, but I'd rather expedite if I can. Now let's get that string down. This height I think is the correct one. So if this works right, I should be able to tune this and play it and it's like a test. And the next thing I gotta do is mark the ends and grind this down. It's a little off-center. So we're going to move it over a little bit and get the position correct. But we can do that for the, um, the official doing. So let's see if we can tune this up and see if we got any fret buzz now in first position. Gee. That looks pretty good. I think we're going to do fine here. We'll tune it again up to pitch. That's there. A. Brand new strings. They're going to stretch like crazy here in the beginning. I just want to see if this is going to work. Uh, I'm not looking for a the end of the line here. I'm still going to take this all apart and then bring it down and um, bring it down and um, grind down the end of this. So let's see how we're doing. Alright. Okay, so that's going to work just fine. Um, where's my quarter? Let's just see what our string height is here. And I think we can even go down on the string height. Because uh, we're a little high up this end. And if I can get the action down lower, I'll be nothing but glad. That's fairly good. This one can be even a little tighter. As I recall, there wasn't much elbow room in this before it bottomed out. Before it bottomed out. It's perfect. Just the way it is. Just the way it is. And if we look back here in the on the back, it's, it's not hitting on the bridge there. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Um, on these Gibsons, the Les Paul. You, when you put the strings on, what they can't do and get away with is having the tail of the string hitting on this part of the bridge. It's got to be clear. Okay, so everything that's in its correct notches. We'll check the intonation, but first we'll finish the job of installing the zero glide first fret. So um, that looks pretty good. So what I got to do is loosen the strings, take this off again and grind down this one, the first fret ends, to get rid of the sharp ends uh, so you can actually play the guitar. Remember what we're doing here? We're trying to make the guitars playable. So that's that. So I'm just going to wind the tension down, mark this again on the uh, metal, 
and um, take it down. All right, so we're still here. We're doing the zero glide. And I put my rubber glove on again, and we've got the good old magic marker because I want this to be black, the same color as the original nut was. And then we're going to take the metal piece downstairs and grind it down. This is spreading crummy. I'm going to get a different marker. See if we can get one that has a more easily spreading tip, if you know what I mean. So we're doing the black again. the old rubber glove. We'll do the ends. And the bottom I'm going to leave alone. And I think the other side I'm going to leave alone. Because I don't want the uh, adhesive to be messed with and I don't want the, the zero glide itself to be messed with. So that's one part. Sort of, kind of. All right, so now we'll flip this the other way and pick it up and see if we can't finish blacking it up. Don't go away mad, we're almost done. This is actually gonna work uh, because it just worked in our test. So we have a high level of confidence is that we fix the problem and that's nice. I love to leave problems resolved when I walk away. <laughs> it makes life much easier. Okay, so that's the, the painting of the uh, bone. And now we'll go downstairs and grind this guy down. Where are you? Right there. Okay, so we're going to grind the ends off of here and make it fit. And what we'll do is we'll bring the, um, the painted knockdown with us and uh, test it. Okay, now this is done. I think it's going to sit right down into there, just like that. So we've got to put a little bit of glue in, and we'll do that. And then once we get ready to glue it, we'll bring the strings right back up and use the strings to hold it in place while it sets up. Good idea? Hell yeah. Okay, so let's do one more fitting. We want to get this dead center in the middle, and then we'll be ready to go, just like that. That's going to go. So we'll untie the strings, so we can get them right up as soon as we're ready to go. Um, where's my marker? Okay, so that's that's where it's going to be. So i got to go get my glue again, and we'll get ready to finalize this. All right, so there's a zero glide. I got it put together. Now I'm going to slap on some glue, some super glue, onto the um, neck here, so it'll catch there and there. And then I'm going to put a little dab right in the front here, so that'll hold. And then we're going to try to put it down into place here, where it will stay because the very next thing we're going to do is get strings on there and get some string tension going to help hold it down in place where it's supposed to be when it's being played. Because what are we doing? We're making a guitar to play. All right, let's get this guy in place. Get that guy in place. That looks pretty good. So now we'll see if we can not tune it up. I'm going to move you guys back a little bit so I can get the tuners tuned. I'm going to tighten the two end ones first, not to pitch, just to get some pressure on the uh, zero guy. That's 
where it belongs because this, the glue's on now. It's all over but the screaming. So we'll get some tension all the way across this now. Because all I want to do is get the glue to set up and hold the zero glide in place. And then we'll get the other one in tune here. Not in tune, you know what I mean, to get in place. I keep saying words I don't mean. Because these strings are all loosey-goosey right now. Um, we'll put the glide under tension from the strings. And we'll try to get it even across the way here. That should be it. Okay, now we're just going to leave it alone for a while. It looks like I've got it in a good place. Looks like it's even. So we, <laughs> we were successful in that installation. Um, we've got the neck is straight. The relief should be good. Uh, intonation we'll check in a little while. But that's the... Um, Zero glide installation. I've done about four of these um, and they've all gone fairly well. I did one on my Martin um, and a couple other guitars. So that's it for now. We're on break. Okay, so the glue, the glero, <laughs> the zero glide is installed um, and I'm just tuning up the pitch. I'm gonna see if I've let the glue dry for a couple hours now. Uh, with tension from the strings um, and I'm just tuning it up so there's an E sharp E okay You can see our action is a little high, I think. No, it ain't bad. It's high at the um, at the first fret, I think. But I think we'll live with that. We'll give it a test and see how it plays. Because um, there's nothing more personal than how it plays. Because after all, what are we doing here? that's on the bench you good I'm gonna lower the action as low as it'll go um, just because I can I want to see if I can get it down as far as I can to uh, whoa I guess we just lowered that action huh so to lower the action there's a screw on each side here that you just got to turn um, you don't do it string by string you do the whole side with a screwdriver. And I think I'm kind of bottomed out. Oh, no, I'm not. I got some room here. And there's probably some room on the other side. So we'll drift that down and see how that comes out. Um, you got any buzz? treble side just a bit. We'll back that off. Just a trifle. <clears throat> Hook it up to an amplifier and we'll tune it up and see how that all goes. All right? So let's step in. Okay, so here we are. We've got... Oh, i got to put the cover back on. 
And I got to set the pickup heights. I haven't done that yet either again since I changed everything around. They're probably pretty close. But I did tune it up and play it, and it sounds pretty doggone good. So I think the zero, what, we, what did we do? What have we done here? All right, so we changed the strings. We put the flat wounds on. We straightened the neck, made that nice. We put the inlays down, okay? And we've changed the nut after I screwed it up twice. We put the, uh, there was a plastic nut that this comes with that was a mess. Um, the tuners were terrible. So we replaced the tuners. Um, and I got to put the cover back on because I'm all done. I adjusted the tr truss rod, flattened the neck. I lowered the action down to where I like it. I got no buzz or anything now anymore. Um, the Zero Glide is a great, it really is a nice, nice way to do a knot. It gives you four different options for height, string height. If you have to go back and change that, you could. Um, however, we've got it in pretty good shape. It uh, The first fret action might be just a little bit high, but I'm not too concerned about that. It plays really well all the way down. So like I said, what I got to do is, oh, and I checked the intonation. The intonation is very good. That was set up good right out of the factory. Um, and it didn't change because I put the zero nut in. Um, and I changed to the other nut first, but that was too low. So I couldn't leave that the way it was. Um, so I had to redo it again. And luckily I had the zero glide here and replaced that with that. So uh, it's playing better. I'm going to put the pieces together, uh, the neck piece back on to cover the hole, and uh, that'll be it. And then I'm going to bring it over and give it a play, okay, because I think it's playing pretty doggone good now. And, oh, I did change the buttons, too, the strap buttons to black. Uh, are they kind of a... They're not really a black. They're a blackish finish. They're a little different than just plain black. And I may, after all that struggle... I think I may stick the wolf on, because this is a, a howling success. Where's my wolf? I got my wolf right here. Uh, I got two of them, as a matter of fact. Maybe I'll put one on each side. Um, something along that line, just to, um, just because I can. It's my guitar. All right, so we got the wolves out. I'm going to place the wolf. As a matter of fact, I'm going to place two wolves on here. Why? Because I can't. I don't want the R on there, so we'll hold it from there. And Howley, Howley, Harley, my old dog who I recently had to put down, used to howl when I played the guitar. So this would be kind of a commemoration for old Harley. She was a great dog. She lived to be almost 14 years old. As a matter of fact, her birthday is coming up this month on the 28th. And I just ripped the nose off the wolf. So let's try and put the nose back on the wolf. <laughs> Sometimes you think you're so damn smart, and you're really just a dog. Uh, but that's the story of my life. Sometimes I think I'm wicked smart, and I'm really just a dog. Sometimes it's okay to be a dog. You are what you are, and you got to learn to appreciate what you are. So that's what I are. And I'm going to put the opposing wolf on the other side howling also. Another pal for my old dog Harry. Oh, I think I'm gonna like the wolves. I think we're gonna like the wolves. Gotta flatten that out. Where's Alice? Where's Alice when you need her? She's right here. So we'll give them a squish. I got crumbs swollen off me or I just had a snack. I think I gotta fix the wolf here. There's a crack in the neck. <laughs> Every time you try to make something better, you make it worse. So just leave it alone, Stevie. Walk away. Make believe you're done. Because you're done. When it's over, it's over. The next thing we'll do is cut the strings off the end. Um, 
and put the um, we'll close up the hole uh, with no extra charge. So first we'll cut the strings off and then we'll fill the hole in. I just like collecting guitars and trying different guitars. This is the first uh, well, it's, I guess this is kind of a real Les Paul, sort of. Um, it's the low end. I don't think you can get any lower on the end of a Les Paul than what this is. Because um, this is, came out pretty chintzy. Um, a couple of things that I just want to mention that I think really stunk. They should have put more money into the tuners and gave you a better set of tuners. And they should have put a real nut in here instead of that piece of plastic crap that it came with. Um, these companies shouldn't pull that kind of cheap shit stuff. They should pony up a little bit and give you things that you really deserve. You're paying good money for stuff and you're trusting them to build and sell to you an instrument um, that's worth owning. Now that I've changed this over uh, and updated these things on this guitar, I think now it's worth owning. I'm not sure it really was uh, worth the money. I think you get more bang for your buck if you go to Fender in the Squire line than I would with this. I wouldn't recommend this over. If you had to make a choice as to which one to get, I would go with the Fender product, um, the Squire. Um, like I said, I just think you get more for your money. For 150 bucks for a Squire Bullet, um, I think you get a better guitar. Um, and I own a couple of them, several of them. And I've upgraded every single one of them too. One of the things I like to do is to modify guitars. Uh, it's kind of my hobby. It's what I like to do. If you look at my stuff I got posted, I've posted a lot of things. And I've changed a lot of things in the process. I rarely keep anything the way it is when it hits my front door. Um, because I buy online. And I really like that too. Um, I don't feel any pressure. I can choose what I want when I buy online. Um, and that's nice. There's nobody edging me in one direction or the other. I'm free to make my own mistakes. Um, so that's that. Okay, so now we've got the cover back on. Um, we've got the wolves installed. I'm going to put the um, goldish uh, guitar strap back on. And I'm going to take it over and play it. Because it's, it's done. Oh, i got to check the string heights. I mean the... Um, the uh, pickup heights. I said I was going to do that and I forgot about it again. I got my pickup height checker right here. So let's take a quick look before we dump everybody. We'll see where we are. Now the pickups are kind of low there. That's a little high, but these things rock back and forth, so it's a little tough to, to get the height set right. This one is the same thing. It's rocking back and forth. The height is pretty good there. Um, maybe I could drop it down a little and it would reduce the pickup of the pickups. That one's a little low. That one, nah, that's good too. Again, it's rocking. These, the humbuckers rock back and forth, so it's hard to exactly know because I dropped this down quite a bit, you know, to get the action low where I like it. And I like it. I like it just fine where it is. The neck is um, almost straight. There's a slight bow. I give it just a little bit of relief. Not a lot, but it's pretty good and we're ready to go play. Okay, so that's the end of this tale. It was quite a story. There's been quite a few changes in this. Um, and I've updated my opinion of the guitar. Now that it's done over the way I like it and with some better parts, the Zero Glide, uh, I think is a serious improvement on the nut, and the tuners that I upgraded uh, are a hell of a lot better than what was on there. So you can actually tune the guitar much better. Thank you. See you at the Stevie playoffs. here again. Listen, we got a playoff we're going to do here now with the new Epiphone, Les Paul, Special Edition, um, SE, whatever. Um, it needed a little love. Okay, I wasn't really uh, thrilled with it the way that it 
showed up. In the beginning, it seemed okay, but once you started looking into it, it got a little funny. Uh, so we did some changes, which I talked about in the setup um, video, and this is just kind of bringing in the door.